So, at this time, it is my pleasure to announce the senior class speaker. At SA, the speaker is chosen by the class each year. The class of 2013 selected Miles Levine. In his time at SA, Miles has distinguished himself not only as a humanitarian, but as an accomplished writer, performer, and filmmaker. Please join me in welcoming Miles Levine. Remember Katie Lee's convocation speech on the first day of school? She told us that none of us is special. And that speech ruined my day, Katie. The day I was born was the happiest day of my parents' lives, I'm assuming. And so, by virtue of the fact that I'm an only child, I thought I was inherently special. So you can see how it was a little difficult for me to discover that my entire life I've been living a lie. I gave this very new concept some thought over the course of the year, and the following is how I wrap my mind around the whole none of us is special deal. Here's how I see things. We are, metaphorically speaking, asexual creatures who give birth to ourselves over and over and over throughout our lives. Each time we re-enter the world, we must clumsily relearn the ropes, having only, previous, having only previ previous experiences to work with. The next versions of ourselves have been preparing for the last four years for this next birth. They will walk first across a line to shake hands with our placental educators. And then we will walk into the world. We, the metaphorical, asexual, birth-giving creatures of the present, also known as the class of 2013, are not special. We are all of the same. We are community. We are students. But the metaphorical, asexual, birth-giving creatures of tomorrow, those being born today, I insist are special because their decisions will shape the future, and I am not saying that I think that cures of cancer and presidents are sitting among us because, let's be honest, that's really optimistic. <laughs> what I'm saying is that literally every decision you make shapes the future in some way. After the spring concert one night, some crew members and I journeyed out to Ben Kaplow's house at 11 o'clock at night to shoot a really miserable scene in the moonlight for my film. Everyone was lost. Everyone was cold. Everyone was tired. And it occurred to me that if I'd never had the idea to shoot a miserable scene under the moonlight, no one would be lost. No one would be cold, and no one would be tired. We would all be sleeping soundly. The simple fact that I had a cool idea made the lives of four people just a little more frustrating. And in a really weird way, that felt really cool. I have a theory about how time works, and it's a little more scientifically plausible than my theory about how birth works. So if anyone would be kind enough to gag and restrain Aaron Shotkin, I'm gonna give it a shot. We live in something of a bubble. We have some idea of what goes on in front of the bubble, good times, bad times, speed bumps, potholes, whatever. But the only second that we can really control, the only second we can really do anything with, is the one that's happening right now inside your bubble. What actions that we take with our one second at a time affects how we will reach the speed bumps and the potholes. Let me demonstrate. The simple fact that I added five seconds of nothing to this speech made it so that you will get home five seconds later. Your relatives will hug you, I hope, five seconds later. And all of the decisions that you were planning to make today will happen, you guessed it, five seconds later. With one meaningless decision, I changed the lives of hundreds of people. And I want to think I saved some lives too. Maybe now you're going to get home five seconds behind that crazy drunken driver you're going to meet on the road today. Or five seconds behind the tree that will fall down. Or maybe I just placed you at the exact location and time that the tree will fall. <laughs> if that's the case, I, I guess my condolences? Um, if it's any consolation to you, the chance that you were going to be a president or cure cancer was fairly slim. So if you know anything about me, you know that I spend 100% of my time around Jewish wise men. Specifically of the bearded variety. One specific bearded wise man was talking with a classmate of mine who was very stressed out about the tests that he needed to take the next day. Answer me this, the wise man said. Is any of that happening right now? And that's the great thing about the bubble. 
We don't have to worry about the potholes on the trees ahead of us. We only have control over one second at a time. And what we do with that second is entirely up to us. We, er, the, and the choice that we make with that second is going to completely alter the way other people choose to use their seconds. That is what makes me believe that the creatures of tomorrow are special. They, they, they matter. That's, they have complete control over the world one moment at a time. See, people don't always change the world in oval offices and in laboratories. Sometimes they do it by deciding that today they're having their toast butter side down. So, Katie, I'm going to meet you halfway. None of us are special, fine. But then we are the beginning of something very special, something with immense pressure built on its shoulders. Hey, newsflash. The entire world is expecting you and me to make absolutely everything better, in general. And that's a big job, but that's okay. Because the time to make absolutely everything better isn't now, it's later. <laughs> it's ahead of the bubble. So all we have to do is recognize that it's coming when we choose how to use our one second at a time. So I want to wrap this up with a personal note. In my senior speech, I talked to you about how I wrote a letter in the eighth grade to my graduated self. Someone made a mistake and the letter came early. It brought me tears of joy. Little Miles offered me the following advice. Quote, we are both graduating. We are both leaving a lot behind. You know, I'm starting to think we have a lot in common. <laughs> Keep dreaming, big kid. Dreams are important, they keep me going through the day. Keep smiling, keep looking up, there is always something better around the corner. Love, your biggest fan, Miles. <laughs> little me, little beanie wearing, braces toting me, asked me to spend my one second at a time dreaming. And when I got to that final line, I wanted nothing more in the world than to do that for him. I said, what I wouldn't give to somehow meet him again and tell him the good news. So when you finally complete this birthing process and step out into the world to decide how to spend your seconds, think of this second. Think of the way present you wants next to you to spend their seconds. That way when it comes time to change the world, you will know exactly how to do it. Love, your biggest fan, Miles. Thanks.